So, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me here to ha have this uh, joint session in uh, Great War meeting. So, and very happy to see all the PACE uh, editorial members here uh, in person. And uh, so, let, let's begin with my topic. So, uh, my topic is Leadless Pacemaker, how to uh, migrate major communications. So I'm from Shanghai. Uh, my name is Xuan Chen. And we know that uh, micro is a revolutionary new technique for pacemaker implantation. Uh, we don't need leads, we don't need pockets. Uh, and uh, also, uh, leadless pacemaker uh, reduced the major complication of the traditional uh, pacemaker implantation. But we, we still need to know that uh, micro is a uh, uh, relatively large in diameters, and also we need to uh, deal with the uh, femoral vein approach, and uh, we still have a very uh, large diameter sheath uh, together with the uh, delivery uh, system. So uh, we should get all familiar with all the procedures, then start to uh, do the procedure and to minimize the major complications. So uh, as for the micro, uh, we know the complication republished, uh, reported like uh, the following. Uh, the major things may be related to the uh, femoral vein puncture, sometimes with the uh, anterior venous uh, fistula and also pursue the urethism. And uh, other things is like thrombus embolism. Uh, already, uh, although it's not quite high incidence, uh, around 3%, uh, but may cause the very uh, severe outcomes, it's like uh, PE or DVT. And other things is like cardio perforation. Uh, as we know, for the conventional leads, uh, we still have some rate of uh, uh, cardio perforation, it's like uh, around 1 to 2 percent. And similar to uh, micro, uh, the published data show that the incidence is around 0 0.5 to 1.6 percent. Uh, but another thing I want to mention here is that for cardio perforation, uh, like the conventional uh, pacemaker, it's not always very severe. Uh, I mean, maybe it's just uh, it's a, um, not a, uh, acute, but a chronic uh, things. But uh, for the micro, uh, may cause some very severe uh, outcome, uh, like the cardiac uh, temporal date, and sometimes uh, they need the surgery or uh, may uh, have the life-threatening uh, result. So we should take care of uh, this complication. And other things is related to the same, like the conditional uh, pacemaker with a high pacing threshold. The patient will have to uh, do the uh, generator change. Uh, and for pa uh, micro, may the incidence is uh, around 0 0.5. And also it's uh, most occurred in 30 days after implantation. And other very rare case of the complication is like the air embolism and also the translocation. I just have some case reports. So uh, it's not quite uh, usual to, to have this uh, complication. So let's come to the first uh, complication related to the femoral vein puncture. So we know that uh, if you want to do the case very quickly, you need you just have uh, with your experience to do the puncture. Uh, but if you want to minimize the complication, you can you need to use an ultrasound guided uh, procedure. So uh, we in our own uh, experience, we have uh, we will do this test. It's called like a slowly withdraw the sheath. So. Uh, after the success of the puncture, we will uh, try to slowly remove uh, the sheath to, and to see the blood flow, the, to see the color, uh, uh, and to double sure that the 
the puncture is uh, inside the vein, not the uh, artery. So uh, if you puncture with the uh, artery, or sometimes like uh, going to the vein first, then to the uh, artery, so you will have the very fast uh, of the blood flow, and also the colors different change. But it's very important that you need to uh, withdraw the sheath very slowly. Uh, if it, it comes very faster, you cannot see the difference between the, between the vein and also the uh, the color of them. Uh, so another things related to the puncture, I think maybe the uh, femoral vein thrombus. We have uh, published just a very small observational uh, study in Chinese. Uh, sorry, so uh, the incidence in our centers uh, experience is like around one uh, two point seven percent. So in one forty six cases, just four cases uh, have the femoral vein thrombus. We detect uh, the ultrasound uh, the day after the procedure, and to see that uh, just four cases have. And also, we uh, will measure the d d dimer. Uh, we will see the d dimer uh, elevation after the procedure, the second day after the procedure. Um, though they have the femoral vein thrombosis, but they don't have PE. Uh, we, we detect them and we give the uh, anticoagulating uh, treatment uh, with, uh, uh, so after that, uh, uh, after two year, two months follow up, uh, the thrombosis, uh, thrombosis uh, all get disappeared. So there's no other uh, severe uh, reverse outcome uh, in these four cases. And during the procedure, we know that we need to avoid uh, the the complication of uh, cardiac perforation. And uh, as I mentioned before, yes, it's quite severe sometimes. So uh, before you deployment, you need to uh, double check the uh, the position of the delivery system. Uh, to do the contrast injection is a good way to ensure. Uh, so I will show you the case uh, when we did, uh, I think, uh, at least 50 cases. We met a case that uh, the delivery system was uh, adversely uh, come into the CS. Uh, so we didn't know because we uh, get used to get the procedure at the posterior anterior view. So at that time, uh, because the case, uh, the patient is uh, quite slim, an old lady, so we tried several times, and it's some difficult to across the tricuspid. And last, I we just use a contrast because we think something wrong with with the the position. So we change to the uh, LAO and to see that yes, uh, it's inside the CIS S. So before you just uh, deployment deploy the micro, you need to double check. And also for the position, uh, ventricular septum is uh, the best position than the apex. And sometimes if it's hard to get uh, fixed in the uh, upper septum, sometimes we, we could still have the lower uh, septum of the right ventricle. And uh, so for the uh, septum, I think we need to all think about because septum is a very large uh, area. So we uh, should uh, like not deploy the micro too distal. Uh, I mean, we, we should avoid the, the position of anterior interventricular sulcus uh, because at this part, it's already very, um, I, I think for the, uh, Ventricular wall is a very thin ventricular wall, so uh, the tile, one of the tile will sometimes will will get uh, perforated. And if you uh, deploy the micro too uh, proximal, uh, that will have some problem with the tricuspid valve uh, because uh, the micro still have 
uh, lens of uh, maybe a model. Oops. Uh, so we we need to like avoid the too distal or too proximal. And before we remove all the uh, sheet uh, the tester, uh, we need to get the solid fixation of the device. Uh, so uh, before that, we need to get the uh, the grooves neck before two taps of the deployments and appropriate pressure to contact the myocardium is very important for the solid fixation of the device. Uh, so here is two uh, figures to show how to give the neck, uh, the goose neck. And uh, uh, different cases, I think we should give different uh, uh, goose of neck. Uh, for example, for several, uh, for the uh, slim, like old lady, uh, be cautious of uh, give too much pressure to otherwise um, the condition uh, the uh, delivery system cup uh, still will damage the uh, injury the the myocardium to uh, have the perforation. So for the deployment, I think we have the tips of the uh, at the first half. Fast deploy. I think the, the signal. <laughs> and uh, the second half, uh, we need to have a slow deploy and uh, plus the withdrawal of the de delivery system because the micro has <laughs> still have the lens of uh, more than 20 millimeter. So uh, we should do the combination uh, of uh, deploy the second half and then also uh, withdraw the delivery system. Another thing for the solid fixation of the device is that uh, we should do the pull and the hole test uh, appropriately. So uh, at least two times need to be engaged in the septum. Uh, but better, uh, more is better. If you can see four times movement, that should be like be better uh, fixation. So the tips is that uh, I think uh, we should uh, give the um, you know the suitable distance between the micro and the delivery system to give the enough uh, room to to uh, hold to pull pull back the uh, the di micro. So and confirms. Uh, four times, you can see all the four times uh, before you uh, get start to the point the whole test. And usually with the position of IO and CI, uh, uh, the usually uh, the position of this view, but uh, sometimes because the heart is uh, changing the uh, position, so uh, not always uh, with this view. And uh, we should also compare uh, before before you pull the tether. You need to com uh, to give a uh, in my center. I will always uh, record a film uh, before I pull the tether to see uh, whether these times are movement before you you get the test or not. Then compare with you pull the tether. Uh, to compare the movement, because sometimes uh, if the micro is not engaged well with the septum, uh, you will see that uh, some of the times are moving, uh, although you didn't pull it. So you need, we need to compare the difference uh, before you pull the tether and after that. And uh, uh, also you need to get appropriate uh, pull force, uh, not too much. If too much, the micro can get get back. Uh, and uh, if too less, uh, the, I, the fixation is not uh, solid, uh, not very confirmed, uh, confirmed uh, to, to get uh, the fixation. Uh, another thing is uh, related to the pacing threshold. Uh, we know that 
uh, if uh, for the conventional pacemaker also uh, they will have uh, some rate of uh, uh, pacing threshold increase uh, after the procedure. And uh, for micro, uh, nearly the same thing. Uh, if you do the pacemaker, do the procedure, you have a very nice uh, pacing threshold also with uh, R wave amplitude and impedance uh, range from 400 to 1,500 1, ohms, you will always get very good uh, pacing threshold during the follow-up. But from this figure, if uh, at implant the pacing threshold is not so good, or like over one 0.5 volt of the pacing threshold, uh, you will all uh, have the high uh, incidence of uh, pacing threshold increase uh, during the follow-up. So 1.5 is a very important figure uh, for uh, for the uh, pacing uh, parameters during the uh, implant. And Low impedance may predict the long-term high uh, rate of uh, the threshold increase. So impedance is a very important uh, parameter uh, to see. So uh, the tips here is that uh, if you have an initial high threshold, but with good impedance, uh, I, I suggest just wait and test again. Uh, maybe uh, with for several minutes, uh, the threshold was going down because uh, you know the micro have may have more uh, injury of the septum uh, than the conventional pacemaker because we take have four times. Uh, we can still wait. Sometimes with a very nice uh, current of injury, uh, you when you using the programming, you can see the EGM of uh, um, current of injury uh, can still wait. Otherwise, if uh, impedance is not good, uh, threshold is high, and then change the position. And for the test, I want to suggest here is that we need to get multiple tests. After deployment, and after pull and the whole test, and also after the uh, theta removal. So you will have uh, uh, several chances if there's something uh, different between the different uh, timing point, you can still have the chance to come back. Uh, if uh, you do it very quickly and the test, uh, uh, sometimes uh, after the th theta removal, you still have the time to have the chance to uh, extract the micro if the uh, pacing uh, parameter is not good. And the last is that uh, find a good position with all good parameters, not only uh, with amplitude, but also, uh, I mean, the impedance and uh, also the pacing threshold, especially for those pacing dependent cases. So in the clinical practice, we will meet some complicated situation. This is the editorial we, I and the Dr. Uh, Wei Jian Huang, uh, together we wrote an uh, editorial uh, in 2021. So uh, that's something uh, like, the, you know, the vein axis, uh, we can still change the different vein axis. And we will meet with the different challenges during the uh, implantation, uh, like the very large heart size uh, and like the cardio cardiac perforation and injury to the septum branch of the coronary artery and also the risk of uh, uh, heart function deterioration. So if we meet these challenges, we can have the different strategies like using a snail assist or use uh, ensure the deployment at the septum and also uh, not frequently change the position, as I mentioned before, choose an appropriate uh, implantation site. And uh, uh, especially the uh, position of the deployment, uh, uh, we, we will choose the middle uh, septum of the RV uh, rather than the apex to uh, reduce the risk of uh, uh, heart function deterioration.
At last, I want to show you a case uh, from my center. So this is a very old lady uh, with uh, uh, slim uh, body size and uh, low bo uh, BMI. Uh, she has a sinus arrest uh, of the, with a persistent uh, atrial uh, flutter. And uh, also he did, she did uh, PCI uh, with two stent implantation one month before the, uh, this time admission to our hospital. And also uh, she is on uh, during antiplatelet therapy. So uh, yeah, this is the case. Uh, what I showed that uh, the delivery system was uh, uh, across, uh, was not able to across the uh, tricuspid valve uh, at the uh, first time. Then uh, the cup was uh, accidentally advances into the uh, CS and with uh, uh, contrast, we can see all the things the, here. And uh, we uh, pull back the catheter, uh, the deliver catheter, and uh, uh, to uh, try to across the tricuspid and uh, get the, uh, deployment after that. So everything seems like uh, uh, normal uh, in the uh, during the implantation. So uh, the patient was uh, uh, systematic and uh, remained uh, uh, hemodynamically stable. But uh, after uh, two, uh, all the uh, PC parameters uh, are stable and normal. But uh, two hours after the procedure, the patient get uh, a pericardial uh, tamponade with blood pressure drop to very low uh, rate uh, and high rate increase. So uh, the ICO showed that median amount of uh, pericardial infusion and uh, the patient was emergently received the, the uh, infusion drainage uh, of uh, 270 milliliter of the blood fluid. Uh, this is the ICO after the drainage of uh, the infusion. Uh, we can see that uh, seems like there's a one time uh, outside of the uh, the apex uh, but the pacing parameters remain stable so we didn't decide to to change the position uh, we just uh, look and see so after that uh, we also have a ct scan to show the position of the micra uh, from this slides we can see that uh, uh, this uh, apex, the position of the apex is at apex, and just one time seems like at the epimyocardium, uh, a little bit outside of the heart shape. So for this case, we think that we need to carefully uh, advance the delivery system uh, at different uh, uh, position, I mean different views, uh, PA or LAO to uh, to confirm the delivery system's uh, position. Uh, and for if the uh, catheter uh, advan uh, advancing into CS, we need to pull back and uh, to see, uh, to use the echo to see if there's any injury of the CS. And if it occurs of the uh, pericardial effusion, uh, we, ne we may need some therapy to do uh, like the uh, protamine or uh, may, may be used at the end of the procedure. And uh, for the uh, for the anticoagulation uh, medication, maybe uh, bevarutin is uh, my suitable for this uh, case with uh, anti uh, already has a stents and also with the antiplatelet therapy. Uh, if the parameters stable, there's no need to change the position. Uh, this case uh, was uh, uh, we we just published this case uh, in uh, the BMC cardiovascular disorder, and you can see the patients uh, uh, after three months discharge, everything seems like normal. So uh, and uh, the platelet uh, antiplatelet. Uh, therapy is still on uh, in this patient. So uh, 
And the last, I want to summarize my topic. So how to minimize the uh, major complication of uh, uh, my uh, pacemaker. I think we need to follow the st standard steps. Uh, so uh, especially for the initial uh, doctors, they don't have enough experience. So uh, we need to follow the standard steps first. Then uh, to do the puncture very carefully using the test as I showed before or uh, the best choice is to guide by the ultrasound. And for the position of the micro, I think uh, deployment at the septum is better uh, than the apex to uh, minimize the uh, incidence of uh, perforation. And find a good position with uh, good parameters like uh, with high uh, impedance and also with uh, low Pacing, uh, pacing threshold, especially for those uh, pacing dependent patients. And the last thing is that to ensure the solid fixation of the micro, uh, we need to see the different uh, uh, views uh, to different uh, uh, views under uh, x-ray to sh ensure uh, that four times all engaged at the septum. And uh, uh, before that, we need to uh, get multiple tests of the parameters. So that's all for my topic. Thank you.